and welcome to Lighthouse Missionary Baptist Church. We are blessed to have you in our midst. And we say to you, as always, sit at your ten doors, sing along with us, praise God with us, move as the Spirit leads you. And we pray that because you will be in this service with us on today, that you will truly be blessed from on high. I call to worship. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights above. Praise him all his angels. Praise him all his heavenly hosts. Praise him sun and moon. <clears throat> Praise him all you shining stars. Praise him you highest heavens and you waters above the skies. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He set them in place forever and ever. He gave a decree that will never pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures, and all ocean depths, lightning and hail, snow and clouds, stormy winds, that do his bidding. You mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, small creatures and flying birds, kings of the earth and all nations, you princes and all rulers on earth, young men and maidens, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord. For his name alone is exalted. His splendor is above the earth and the heavens. He raised up for his people a horn, the praise of all his saints of Israel, the people close to his heart. Praise the Lord. <coughs> I invite you to read along with me, with us, as we read a statement of belief. We believe that God is the creator of all things, that his son Jesus Christ was born of the Virgin Mary and died on Calvary's cross to pay the ransom for our sins. We believe in the Holy Spirit, who is our guide and comforter as we journey through this life. We believe that all scripture is the absolute and inspired word of God, our roadmap and guide as how we are to live our lives. We further believe that the church is a people called by God to spread the good news of the gospel to the entire world and to support edify and build the time of need. I have a song of praise at this time, and we'll return with our scripture lesson for this morning. <laughs> Thank you. 
scripture lesson today comes from Matthew in chapter 4, verses 5 to verse 9. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 4, verse 5 to verse 9. Hear ye the word of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. <clears throat> if you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. Jesus answered him, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. In verse 9, all this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Bread in your hearing, the Gospel of Matthew chapter 4, verses 5 through 9. May God bless <clears throat> and sanctify his holy word in our hearts. We have another hand at this time and we will return with our prayer, praise, and exhortation. Please remember those <clears throat> of your loved ones, your friends, your neighbors, your co-workers, <clears throat> your bosses, those you pass on the street as you journey to work or to the corner store or even to the mall. You may not know them. You may be begging for whatever you have to, to spare to give to them. Whatever the case may be. Remember them in prayer. And 
always remember what I tell you each and every Sunday, and regardless of the person's station in life. We all stand in a need of prayer. Let's go before God. Gracious and eternal God. We thank you this morning for bringing us out to this place that we might praise and we worship you. We thank you for being a great and powerful God that reigns high but yet looks low. God that provides for all of our needs from this storehouse in the world. We thank you for being our long suffering God. A God that loves us unconditionally. Even when we don't love ourselves. When we have strayed off the path you have us to be on. Even in those mornings when we have turned our back upon you. We just thank you, Lord, that even in those moments when we're led astray by the world, that you still love us, you still are concerned about us, you still want us back into your fold, into your bed. And you don't stop until you bring us back. That you try everything that you can, Lord, and when it gets to a point when you chosen just refuse to listen is when you turn the Lord's word up to be mine and give them over to their desires of this world. But we thank you. <clears throat> that you never less could we thank you that in spite of ourselves, in spite of our shortcomings in life, you're always there. Always waiting, Lord, for us to call upon you in our time. So we thank you, Lord, for pushing the strength and the help. <clears throat> we thank you for the food that you place on our tables, the food and the clothing, the clothing and shoes that is that you have given us to put on our bodies. We thank you for our transportation, Lord, that we have. In light, Lord, whether it's public transportation, whether it's a vehicle that you have provided, that we're able to get from point A to point B. We just thank you for all things. Father, of course, you're so good to us. You're better to us than we are to ourselves. And we just thank you, Lord. For the many valuable blessings that you continue to shout down upon us. <clears throat> Many fail to recognize your blessing. But we, Father, thank you. We praise you for what you have done in our lives and what you're going to do. Continue to lead us down these uncertain roads in life. <clears throat> to continue to follow you. Make your Holy Spirit present in our lives to lead us, to guide us, even when we become stubborn. Because without your Holy Spirit, Lord, we will utterly fail in life. We will find ourselves caught up in things that we cannot get ourselves out of. <clears throat> so we thank you, Lord. We praise you. We lift you up this morning. Then, Lord, we recognize that we have sinned on children before. Whether it was attitude, 
brothers getting mad at our family members. What was a lot of the words that slipped out of our mouths and we shouldn't have had in our minds in the first place or in our hearts. No matter if I live in was by thought, word, or deed, Lord, we ask for your forgiveness. We ask for your cleansing. We ask for your strength. <clears throat> but we know we cannot do this on our own. But Satan is working overtime, trying to draw us away from you. So we need you, Lord. More than we ever need you before. And we are to stand strong and steadfast. In the midst of Satan's attacks, we need your strength. We need your guidance to know where to go and what to do in life. Because we realize that we cannot depend on our Lord, to give in and give up. We have the tendency to go the other direction. But we need to know from all of that. At the past that we have traveled, or the ones you have us to be on. And let us all be attuned to your will, Lord, to know that. Wherever you send us, wherever you place us in life, this is where we need to be. The world might try to convince us otherwise. So you may try to convince us that the past that we own are not the past we should be on. But let us be strong enough to, to know that where you place us, whether we like it or not, I don't realize it or not, is where we need to be. You make no mistakes, Father. Let us go near and dear to your will. Let us, Father, call upon your name in our time of need. Let us always be able to look to you the often finisher of our faith for direction in this life, for help in the time of need. You are everything, Father. Every way, as we move throughout the service, as we sing, as we pray, as we send praises up to you, Lord that they may all be pleasing in your sight. We ask your blessing upon the lighthouse and all that we're trying to do in this community. We ask your blessing upon our membership, upon our absentee membership. We just ask that you continue, Lord, to be our guiding force, showing us what you will have for us to do in this community. That when it all said and done, that you will get the praise beyond the end of glory. Just have you with us today. Watch your words throughout the rest of this day, Lord, and throughout the night that prepares for this coming week. We don't know what will be coming our way, our direction. The trials, the tribulations, the storms of life may be born on the horizon. 
Because we know, Lord, as long as we're walking in and with you, that we have nothing to do. Thank you, Lord. We love you, we praise you. And we ask these and all things in your precious name of thanksgiving. Amen. And look, you know the song in this time, and as you listen to the hymn, or the word of God in song, as I like to say, think about our to the day as we continue our journey. Looking at resisting temptations in life. Testing of our faith part two. The law of the world. stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, it is written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. <clears throat> all this I will give you, he said, if you bow down and worship me. Testing of our faith, part two, the lure of the world. The word lure means to tempt a person to do something or to go somewhere, especially 
by offering some form of reward. Better said, it is to entice a victim into a moral trap, luring them in through their own selfish impulses with the promise of pleasure or reward. It can also simply imply a drawing to danger, evil, or difficulty through attracting and deceiving. That's what the devil does. Deceives. And lies. <clears throat> There's an old saying like this that has been used in different ways over the years that is summed up in three simple words. Selling your soul to the devil. I would like to call it fall and pray to the lure or temptation of the world. You see, people are tempted far too often to desire things that they don't have and really don't need in life. But Satan has a way of using the world to tempt us in ways that are very hard to resist, whether it's drugs, alcohol, greed, or lust, just to name a few. Resisting temptations in life can challenge us beyond our wit's end. And the lure of the world can be so enticing powerful and inviting that people often get in and end up on the wrong side of the tracks of life, if you will. Last week we talked about how Satan attacks us by preying on our most vulnerable areas or weaknesses in life. He knows when and where to attack and tempt us. And he knows which buttons to push. But when that doesn't work, Satan will use our greed and our hidden desires for the spoils of this world. When trying to tempt our Savior to exercise his own authority above that of God because of his hang on uh, Hunger, trying to say a word that ain't, that ain't mean that. Didn't work. Because Satan was sure that when he enticed Jesus to turn the rocks into bread, that he would have done it. But when that did not work, yeah. Satan resorted to lure or tempt our Savior with worldly desires. In a, in a bid to bring him under his control. Can you remember the words in our scripture lesson? Bow down and worship me. But the problem here was that Satan had forgotten that all that he was offering Christ at that time belong to God anyhow. Yes, and because it belonged to God, it also belonged to the Son. So Satan couldn't give him or offer him anything that he didn't already own. But this is what Satan does so well. To use our jealousy and greed to tempt and lure us with the offer of quests for worldly possessions, wealth and prestige. We see it in a lottery where people continue to play the lottery even after winning large sums of money. They keep playing it because they're driven by greed. We see with families 
and, in, and individuals living beyond their means after being deceived by the world into believing that they can keep up with the Joneses and those who are in a totally different ways bracket than they are. We have seen it in the news with the pharmaceutical companies and the pharmacy chains that now find themselves in legal and financial difficulty from manufacturing and dispensing an excessive amount of opioids or powerful painkillers because the opportunity it presented to increase their bottom line. They seen how they can make a tremendous profit. And so they indulged in producing more opioids than was necessary. And they spent to them or filling prescriptions, if you will, for individuals that came in for those drugs. They did this by us. Because of money. Rather than a concern for their patient's safety and well-being. We've also seen it recently with organized gangs robbing high-end jewelry stores and department stores. Drug cartels have and still are manufacturing and selling drugs laced with powerful painkillers and dangerous horse tranquilizers because of the greed for money and power. Not thinking about the adverse effects. Not thinking about the overdoses that will occur. But only about satisfying their greed for power and money. The law of the world has had a de devastating consequences. As many stores are closing, merchandise are being locked up out of the reach of would-be thieves. And people are still overdosing and dying on opioids and other illegal street jobs. Families and individuals are being evicted from their homes and their cars are being repossessed because they are in over their head financially. Satan is having a good time, Lighthouse, exploiting our weaknesses. Satan is having a good time exploiting our hidden desires and wants in this life. Because we have stepped away from God and His will for our lives. We have gotten this mindset now that whatever God has given, us, given to us or blessed us with is simply not enough. We don't want a plain house, row house on, on the block. We want to live like high society. We want to drive around in a hoopty. Or we want a BMW or a Rolls Royce. We don't want to just wear any old thing. We need and desire to wear high-end clothes. That's what Satan does. Deceives us into believing that we need to have that which we don't have. We lived without it all this time, but all of a sudden now we have to have it. Yes, the lure and temptation of the world is powerful and enticing. We must remember that God will not allow 
for us to be tempted more than we are able to bear. And because of this lighthouse, we can fight. Because of this, we can remain steadfast and unmovable. Because the victory has already been won. I leave you with these questions to ponder upon and to answer this coming week. Which side of the tracks of life are you on? Have you embraced the fact and truth of God's word that the victory has already been won? Or will you continue allowing the world to tempt and lead you astray? What the world offers is temporary. What God offers is eternal. The choice is simple for me. Which will you choose? Resisting the temptations in life. Part three. As we prepare to close this portion of our service, just know that Satan is busy. He's working overtime. has nothing to do in life but to try to distract us and lead us away from God. That's his sole purpose, his reason for being. Haven't we done enough damage? Trying to do things our way. It's time to let God have his way with us. It's time, as we always say, and I like this cliche, to let go and to let God. With that said, we want to open the doors of the church and issue the invitation to discipleship. We have a habit of putting things off. Thinking that we have all this time on our side that we can just take our good old time and, and making up our minds what our decision will be. But I want you to know today that you don't have the time you think you have. The moment you're in right now may be your last moment. And if you're not right with God, then you're going to have a problem when you come before the judgment seat. So we say to you, make this time, this moment in time, the moment you decide to let Christ into your life. The time that you decide to stop running. Because you realize that the thing that I've been chasing all this time and it has been standing before me. I just didn't see it because I was caught up in the world thinking that what I needed the world had. So are you ready to stop chasing? Have there something that will always remain beyond reach? Are you ready to let Jesus in? Are you ready to give up that life that you thought you wanted to lead? Are you ready to let Satan go and let God to what, what he alone is able and willing to do. So the call goes out. Those who come by baptism, the call goes out. For those who come in, or to come by Christian experience, the call goes out. For you to come by way of rededication of the faith, it still resides in you. You may not recognize you, you may not even feel it in your spirit. 
but it's never left you because God still has his hand upon you. The bottom line is when you come today, when you let go of that life that is taking you nowhere fast and recognize that all these things I've been chasing and trying to hold on to is temporary. But what I need, I really need in my life, is something that's going to last for an eternity. This is your time. My information has been posted. Reach out to me by phone, by email, and we will talk. Until then, God bless you. We ask and uh, encourage you to reread the scripture, see how God speaks to your heart, to read all the things that have been posted, the announcements, the flyers, that you might be on with the poor with the White House, and lastly, that when you do your budgeting, and you know money is tight with inflation and everything else going on. You have to work a second job, just go to the grocery store and buy something to eat. But in your budgeting, remember Lighthouse. Remember that God loves a cheerful giver. God bless you. And have a smile upon you. And we'll see you. Same place, same time. Same station.